Let k equal the set containing 0, union the set containing 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on. Show k is compact directly from the definition of compact without using heim borel So if we were to use heim borel we would be able to use the fact that any subset, any subset of Rn that is closed and bounded, and we would be able to show that this set k is closed and bounded, any subset of Rn where, where n is in the positive integers, and this is just short for the positive, this bolded z with the plus underneath it is short for positive integers. Any subset of Rn is, that is closed and bounded is also compact. So they don't want us to use that theorem. They want us to practice using this definition of compactness and open covers and finite subcovers and, and also practice, practice proving a statement, proving a fact in multiple different ways, which can help with, with create, creative proof writing and, and just help with problem solving skills. So let's do that. Let's do that. So, if, if G alpha is an open cover of K, and we can show, if we can, and if, and if we can show, and if we can show that G alpha this set, this collection of open subsets, this collection of open sets, this collection of open sets whose union contains K. That's what it means for, for this collection of open sets to be an open cover. It means for the, the union of all of these sets in this, this collection of open sets to contain K. So if this collection of open sets contains, if we're able to show that that collection of open sets has a finite subcover, that is to say there exists, there exists a finite number there exists a finite subcollection, or they, you, you can also think of this instead of the word subcollection. You can also think of this: this is a set of sets. So, if there is a subset of this set of sets, such that the union of all the sets in that subset contain K, or sometimes you also hear there exists a finite subcollection that is also that's also also an open cover. For k, then we've shown that we've shown that k is compact because g this this open this collection of open sets this is any that is an open cover for k this is any open cover this is a general open cover for k this is any open cover for k so therefore if we're able to show that that open cover must contain a finite subcover then we've shown that k is compact. Okay, so let me remind ourselves of these two definitions and I'm going to have them to our right here for for reference. So, if, if K is contained, if K is contained in an open cover, open cover, say, this collection of G alphas, where all of these G alphas are open, then this implies that for every X and K, for every X and K, X is in G alpha I for some alpha I in our indexing set I. And this indexing set is a way to index all of these all of these G alphas in here. And the reason this is true is because K, if K is contained in the union of all of these open sets, then that, that implies that K is a subset of the union of all of these alphas for each alpha and I, for every alpha and I. K is contained in that union of all of these G alphas. So that means that for every K, for every X and K, X is in G alpha I for some alpha I in our indexing set I. Okay. So this implies, this implies that zero is in some G alpha J for some for some, I could also write it like this, instead of referencing referencing the G alpha J through its index, I could say for some G alpha J that's contained in the set of open sets, G alpha. So we know that zero is contained in some G alpha J, which is an open set, for some G alpha J in our collection of open sets. Now, our 
I'll refer you to the right here for our definition of an open set, if you if you don't remember, but or for your reference. But since g alpha j is open, and since zero is any point in g alpha j, then that implies by the definition of open set of an open set, that implies that there exists there exists an open ball with center with center zero and radius and radius r that is entirely contained that is entirely contained in g alpha j okay so that's cool that's cool and look at what i can do here look at how, what i can do i've proven in a separate video which i'll link in the description in the, and in the top the eye icon in the top right corner that this set right here this set, which is composed of the following sequence, which is composed of the following sequence, I've proven in a separate video, one comma one half comma one third comma one fourth, and so on, which I can write generally as the sequence one over n from n equals one to infinity. I've proven that the sequence converges to zero. I've proven that this sequence converges to zero converges converges to zero so look at what I can say here look at what I can say I can say by definition of convergence we have that since R R is strictly greater than zero the radius of our open ball that the zero zero is a center of that, that zero is center, the center of, and that is also entirely contained in this G alpha J, that R, since R is strictly greater than zero, that there exists, we can, we can pretty much substitute this R in for, the def, in for epsilon in this definition of convergence, that R, is strict, if, since R is strictly greater than, than zero, there exists a capital N in the positive integers, in the positive integers, such that the distance from zero to any term in our sequence, one, one half, one third, one fourth, and so on, is less than, strictly less than R for all, for all N strictly greater than N. Check this out though. The definition of the open ball centered at zero is all points P such that the distance from zero to P is strictly less than R. This is the definition of, an, this, is, this is exactly the set of, set of all points that is in that are in the open ball centered at zero with radius r. So check this out. All of these all of these elements in this sequence, one over n, all of these elements that are a distance from zero less than r, all of those elements are in the open ball with center zero and radius r. So check out what I can do here. I'm gonna clear some space. I'm gonna move up and, and I'm gonna clear some space here. So check this out. Check out what I can do now. I can, I, we can, we can consider the following set. Consider the following set. All elements in this sequence, one over n, from n equals one to big n. This sequence right here, this set of points, is a finite sequence. This set of points is a finite sequence. And this set of points, this set of points is a subset of K, which is of course a subset of our open cover, of our open cover, all, all of these G alphas, which is which of course we can write as, a, as like this all the union of all alpha in our indexing set i of all these g alphas where alpha is in our indexing set i so that means that means this this that means that this implies this implies that this collection of open sets is also is also an open cover is this this collection of open sets G alpha is an open cover, open cover for this finite set, this set with a finite number of elements, aka a finite set, one over n from n equals one to n. But check this out, I've proven in a separate video, again, which I'll link in the in the description in the top right corner here, that that the eye icon in the top right corner, I've proven in a separate video that any finite set, any finite set is compact. Any finite set is compact. Any finite set set is compact. And what does that mean? What does that mean? 
Well, that means that for any open cover of, of a finite set, for any open cover of a finite set, that that open cover, that open cover connects, uh, that open cover contains a finite subcover for that set. So there exists, in other words, there exists a finite, a finite set of indices of indices, say alpha one, alpha two, and so on, all the way to alpha say k for a finite k, where all of these alphas, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k, these are in our indices, index, indexing set i, are set 1 over n, from n equals 1 to n, is contained in the union from i equals 1 to k of, check this out, g alpha i. So that's cool. That's really cool, but check this out. Let me clear some room here to make room for my final point. So check this out. If I consider the set, the union from i equals 1 to k of the g alpha i's, unioned with g alpha j, look at what this, look at what this does. Look at what this does. Well, g alpha j, g alpha j contains the open ball, the open ball centered at 0, which contains all points, all points from all points P such that the distance from zero to P is less than R, which contains all points as I've shown below by the, by, by the convergence of this sequence one, one half, one third, one fourth, and so on. This open ball contains all points one over N from zero, excuse me, from n, n equals n plus one to infinity, n equals n plus one to infinity union zero, because zero is the center of this open ball. So in other words, and this, this set, this set right here, one over n, from n equals n plus one to infinity union the set containing zero, this should be the set containing zero here. Union this set one over n, one over n from n equals one to n. This is equal to k. This is equal to k. And if I union these two guys together, if I union these two guys together, since g alpha sub j contains this set, and this set right here contains this set, then I, I've just found a finite union of, of sets from our collection of open sets that, that contains K. That is to say, I found a finite subcover for K. Again, because this set right here, that contains, that contains this set right here, one over N from N equals one to N. And this set right here, that contains, I'm writing my, I'm writing my, um, I'm writing my subset sign, which I usually write horizontally. I'm writing them vertically here, just so you don't get mixed up. This is, these are not union signs. If you tilt your head to the left, they're subset signs. This, this set right here, this G alpha J, this contains, as I've shown through this series of, of containment, um, subset containments here, this contains the set one over N, N from N equals N plus one to infinity, union zero because it contains the open ball centered at zero and with radius r which contains all this this set right here which contains this set and these two sets together these two sets together are k so therefore the union of these two sets the union of th these two sets which is a union of a finite number of sets contains k so therefore k has a finite subcover